Welcome to Here We Are, Brattleboro's community talk show. I'm Wendy O'Connell, and here we are. We are still in the middle of winter, and very luckily for us, on our show today, we have someone who has made winter, especially in this area, a lot more fun. John Caldwell is with us today. And John is someone whose love and enthusiasm for cross-country skiing have shaped, developed, and evolved this sport over the years. We could give you a whole list of accolades and honors that he's had, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to talk about that in the show. However, he was in the 1952 Olympics. He was the founder of the New England Nordic Ski Association, and he's coached for many teams, from Putney School to the U.S. Olympic team. He's also in many sports halls of Fame. In 1964, he wrote the Cross Country Ski Book, which was the first of its kind. It was a seminal book, and it brought cross country skiing into the mainstream America. So, here we are with John Caldwell. Hi, John. Hello. It's great to have you on the show. Excuse me? It's good to have you oh. on the show today. <laughs> this is a good, good experience for me. Oh, yeah? To be, to be in front of a camera? Doesn't matter. You know, I don't, yes, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure. I'm sure you've done a lot of interviews in your life. Yes, but uh, not like this. Yeah, hometown. <laughs> hometown interview. You have done so many things outside in the snow, especially, although you were born in Detroit, and I believe you spent some time in Ithaca, and your dad was studying forestry? Is that? At Cornell, yeah. Uh -huh. He studied forestry, agriculture. Mm hmm and I think the story of how you came to Putney is pretty interesting. It seemed like a real act of fate that you even ended up here. Well, yeah, sure. My father played basketball at Cornell, and he got hired by the Ford Motor Company to go out and play for their team in Michigan and Detroit. He's only about 5'10". He probably didn't measure up against these seven-foot giants. He went to Pennsylvania and uh, was the project manager for the Laurel Hill State Park. That was a big job, a big state park. And when he was in Pennsylvania in Somerset, he met and befriended a guy named John Skull. John was an usher at Carmelita Hinton's wedding. Carmelita founded Putney School back in 36. Right. And so when John went to the wedding, he, he, obviously talking with Carmelita, and she said, I'm looking for a business manager <laughs> for Putney School. So John t told my father, and he went up and interviewed, and he got the job as a business manager. Well, he had three kids then, and so the job included free tuition mm. at Putney School. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's how we got there. And in those days, Putney School included seventh and eighth grades, I believe? Yeah, fifth, sixth. All, they had all the grades uh. because they had a lot of faculty and there weren't, they didn't have places like the grammar school or right. elementary uh, public schools. And that's where you met your wife to be. <laughs> yeah. I went to Putney School in the eighth grade and there she was. <laughs> <laughs> she started Putney School in the fifth grade. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, so I've known her since 1940, 41 or 41, something like yes. that. Was your first experience of skiing in Vermont? Yes. It was. Definitely. And it was cross country? Alpine. It was Alpine. Yeah. Uh -huh. Putney School had a huge ski program. All but two or three students skied. Uh huh. And they were supposed, Carmelita was a big believer in exercise right. and out of doors. And so all the students were supposed to be out of doors two hours a day, five days a week. And so we had in the winter, they did a lot of work jobs, you know. They did worked on the farm, mowed the grass, cut wood and all that kind of stuff. Right. So in the winter, there wasn't that much work to do. So... Carmelita said, all right, you'll ski four days. And everybody, I mean everybody except about three people, had alpine skis. Uh -huh. And they had a marvelous system. I inherited this system when I started working there in 1953. They, they had the best students became ski teachers. And so the best students would, as skiers, the director of skiing would pull them back, 
get them back early from Christmas vacation, which was five weeks, mm -hmm. and uh, teach them how to teach. They were the A team, the teachers. Uh -huh. So everybody else, everybody else skied, and all the kids were assigned teams, A, B, C, D, E. Uh -huh. And uh, it was very good. A did new parallel. B team was stem Christi. C team was stem turns. Yeah. Carmelita Hinton, the director, was on the C team. <laughs> she, she never got off the C team. <laughs> and the D team was beginners snow plows. Yeah. And uh, E team was beginners also just, you know, teaching that stuff. So I, they, they had a huge program. Yes, yes. And did you love it from the beginning? Oh, yeah. You did? Oh, yeah, that was good. And you liked the Alpine? Yeah, and then we had a team, of course, and uh -huh. I was good enough to make the team junior year, and the state meet, <laughs> the state meet, they had to do four events, cross country and jumping. Right. We had a jump, actually, and I, I did a lot of jumping, 10th, 11th grade, and I was a pretty good jumper, and uh, we needed a cross country team for the state meet. We were going to the state uh -huh. meet big time. And so I, <laughs> I didn't have cross-country skis. I borrowed my sister's alpine skis. They were a little bit shorter than I was, no edges. Uh -huh. I put the cable bindings. I lengthened the cable bindings, opened up the bear traps. And so that was my cross-country ski. And uh, I uh, went to the cross-country race at the state meet first time on those skis. I sort of ran around the course. I didn't know anything about striding or skiing. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, I galloped around the course, little, 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 and, and uh, gosh, I came 10th or 11th. I said, holy cow, this is pretty good. So, so then, well, then we qualified. We finished second or third in the state meet. So we qualified for the New England High School Championships. Well, I said, Okay, well, I'm going to train now. So I had one week to train for cross country. So I went down in the woods below the dorm where we lived and, uh, and tried to ski fast for a while. And I got tired and I said, oh, the hell with this. I am going back. And so I trained. I skied one day in a race. I trained one day and I went to the New England Championships. And I finished 48th huh? out huh? of 52. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Uh. That was my whole experience. Wow. So how did you get to the Olympics? Because it wasn't long after that, right? That's right. Well, this was, I went to college in 46. Mm -hmm. And I went out for the ski team freshman year. During that time, I, I skied in one race, borrowed the coach's skis, because I didn't have any. Uh -huh. And... <laughs> The ski kept coming off in the race. Well, I finished 26 in that race out of 26. <laughs> <laughs> and so after, I guess after my freshman year in college, I had been in three races and I'd practice about two days. That was <laughs> my, the extent of my cross country after freshman year, but sophomore year, they thought I had potential, I guess, so they bought me a pair of skis. Uh -huh. I went to college four years, and I got to be a very good uh, ski meister type. Downhill, slalom, cross country, and jumping. And then I graduated and uh, had to get a job. So I got a job at Linden Institute up north. Mm -hmm. and then I had been in the ROTC in college, and... Uh, so I, it came due, I had to go two years for naval duty in 1953. Mm -hmm. So I, but when, the year before, when I was at Linden Institute, they had two tryouts for the Nordic combined team. And so I entered those, one was at Berlin, one was at Rumford. And I entered those and came second both races so they had to put me on the Olympic team. So that got you into the Olympics, and you were obviously good enough to go and well, compete. Well, I was good enough by U.S. standards. Yeah. We didn't have much of a coach. 
he he got over there. And he was a Swede. He got over there and had a girlfriend and all. So we never saw him. The manager, when the plane landed, the manager got off the plane. We never saw him again. <laughs> so we were kind of coaching each other, and a couple of us had some contacts. And so one day at breakfast, the I guess the manager was there. The coach made one of his infrequent appearances. He said, we, we've got a guy for you to ski with. Uh, we'll go out in Nordmark, and we've got a guy from the bank who wants to go out with you. And I said, oh, good. So he'll, he'll show us where to go. So we met him, and he started skiing up in Nordmark, all the trails in, in, outside of Oslo. And he dropped us. He was much faster than any, well, especially myself and another guy, a combined guy. But he just skied away from us. Huh. And I thought, hmm, now let's see if this banker is so much faster than we are. Uh -huh. <laughs> what's going to happen to the Olympics? And it happened. <laughs> oh, we got creamed. I have never, ever been so poorly prepared for... Uh, for an event, uh -huh. even if it would have been tiddlywinks or something, you know, I was totally unprepared, totally outclassed. And so I said to myself, this is bad. And I said, I'm going to devote some time to coaching, and I hope this never happens again. Uh -huh. I got the job at Putney School, so yeah. I started there in 1953 yes. coaching. What was it about coaching that you liked? I think I'm good at recognizing techniques, yeah. and I like helping people, and I love coaching. My father was a good coach. Ah. When I came to Putney School in 40, 1940, 1931, yeah. he was grooming me for basketball. See, you know, like I said, I could walk under this t table without bending my <laughs> knees. I was so small, and uh, but he... He got to uh, Putney, and I got there. And the first vacation, Christmas vacation, Putney School, I walked around town two or three weeks with a basketball under my arm like this, looking for somebody to shoot hoops with. Uh huh. I couldn't. Nobody, <laughs> nobody played basketball. They all skied. Yeah. So I had no choice. Right. So. Right. So you coached for many years at Putney School. Yeah, thirty, years. thirty or thirty. You're teaching math as yeah. your day job there yeah. too. So you're spending a lot of time doing, you've got two jobs basically, uh, yeah, right? right? In your years of coaching, there were so many kids that came through Putney School that went on to, um, to the Olympics. Yeah. You had um, Bob Gray, Martha Rockwell, Bill Koch, uh, most famously probably, who picked up a silver medal in, what yeah. year was that? 76. 76. There was something about your coaching that really worked. Must be, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have really any decent alpine slopes at Putney, so yeah. I naturally did more with cross country and I imported skis and started selling skis at bargain rates. Hmm. So we got a lot of people with cross country equipment. And then when it came time to sign up for sports, Heifer and I both, they knew we were gonna coach cross country, the students. So, and we did a little bit of campaigning in our classes. We'd say, uh, you know, your math grade might be better if you went out for a cross-country team. It just it works that way. <laughs> and so, so we started out, and uh, we had quite a few kids, 10 or 15 kids. And I went out one day, I was coaching them, and I, trying to coach them all technique. And uh, I said... This is, this is tough, this is too much, that's too many kids. And so I thought, what's the worst thing about a coach can do? And I said, I'm gonna weed out some of these kids. So I said, I'm gonna make them do repetitions. So I, I went out there and I said, okay, we have this big field at Putney. It's about two athletic fields, about 400, 200 meters. Mm. 200, at least 200 yards. So I said, okay, here's the workout for today. Ski down there once and back five times. Five times, yeah. So yeah. And I stood there and I'd make comments as they went by. And, and I'd have them change technique once in a while. 
And so uh, the kids the kids actually loved it. Huh. The, the next day, some students came up to me and said, hey, Johnny, can I go out for the cross country team? I said, you wanna go out for, you know what we're doing? We're just doing drills. Oh, I love it. The kids loved it. And so we ended up with uh, 50 or 60 kids. Wow out for cross-country skiing. Wow. What was it about it that they liked? Was it the rigor of it? I don't know. I was trying to get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> and they kept coming. <laughs> I think it was, no, I think it was, they were getting good coaching. I think it was the companionship, the mm -hmm. social mm -hmm. life there. But in 67, uh, <clears throat> you really helped to start the U.S. women's cross-country team. Is that oh, correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How yeah. did that come about? Oh boy. Well, the manager of the team for the world championships in 66, mm. he and I decided we wanted to promote women's skiing. So we arranged a meeting at the world championships with a big Swedish official woman, Inga Lodin. And uh, we said, what can we, we want to start women skiing. The women didn't have any races. Yeah, right. And there were no women's teams, yeah, you know, yeah. back then. And so she said, okay. She, <laughs> she spoke very good English. She said, I tell you boys, boys, I tell you boys something. A lot of you Americans think you have to be an Amazon woman to uh, do well. That's not so. She said, I can send you three good looking girls who were excellent skiers. So we signed up and she sent them over. Mm -hmm. They were knockouts. <laughs> and good skiers. And good and skiers. Good skier. A couple of them in 68, a couple, they got two or three gold medals between them. I coached the cross country team in 68 at uh -huh. the Olympics. Uh -huh. And so I, they paid my airfare and I got room and board, no salary. Wow. So I paid and came back, uh -huh. and that happened in 66, World Championship, 68 Olympics, 70 World Championship, yeah. 72 Olympics, so, you Yeah, know. in your years of coaching, um, being involved with the Olympics, you did a lot of traveling. Yeah. Yeah, and I imagine the difference in traveling from 1952, when you first went to <laughs> Oslo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, to yeah. whenever you last flew yeah. was a tremendous difference. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. From propeller, propeller airplanes to jets. Were and, they? Yeah. Yeah. I did a lot of traveling when I was in the, two years in the Navy, too. Oh, uh-huh. I've been to Europe, I don't know, 24, 26 times. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot. Did you enjoy it? Oh, usually, but now I don't like to travel. Right. I'm too old for that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, too old is, is uh, you know, everybody says it's a state of mind, but it's a reality as well, right? <laughs> That's for sure. That's for sure. And you founded at some point the New England Nordic Ski Association? Yeah, and I forget when that was. It was yeah. probably in the 80s. You talked about uh, ski clubs and wanting to get groups of kids or adults together yeah. to, to have teams or to work together. Was that the idea behind that? The idea behind was to get groups, local groups forming a club uh -huh. and to run a program without any influence from the public school system. Hmm. Because the public school system would say, okay, Wendy, you're the coach. And, and then the girls would come, maybe, maybe you'd be coaching the girls. So the girls would come out and you'd, you start coaching, you say, well, uh, the, the headmaster say I can't coach you until January 10th. Mm -hmm. So you're, no, you're not coaching them until January 10th. Mm -hmm. So there were restrictions, oh, more, more restrictions. That's still alive and well, right? Oh yeah, the public school team. Yes, and there are other ski schools now in Vermont. Lots, that's good. So the kids go there with the intent of improving in cross country. Yes. And they spend any exercise is cross-country directed. In reading, rereading your book, which was really fun, because it's so conversational, you know, yeah. and you have such a great spirit and enthusiasm. And one of the things that really struck me was that um, you, anecdotally, but also just in the course of talking about cross-country skiing, 
uh, talked about it as a family sport and how much fun it is. Yeah. And you would talk about your family, four kids, yeah. and your late wife, Hep, yeah. who would all go out for a day yeah. and clear paths and ski together. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I think one of the main attractions, although it, people don't write about it too much, is that uh, getting ready for cross country. I won't say training. I'm not going to say that you're training for cross country. You're just getting ready for cross country. You're not racing. Yeah. But getting ready for cross country it fills in with a good lifestyle. Yeah. You can go swimming, mm -hmm. biking, running, roller skiing, right. mountain climbing, all that kind of yeah. stuff, and it all promotes uh, fitness mm -hmm. for cross country, mm -hmm. and that's a great lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Healthy, healthy, very healthy. That's healthy, that's the whole thing, yeah. And for you, living in Putney and your family, you could just walk out the door. When I was starting to teach at Putney School, going to teach at Putney we didn't, like I say, we didn't have a place to live. And I thought back in the 53, I thought maybe I'd like to go into the ski industry, ski business. Hmm. And so they're just building Mount Snow. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'll get a job at Mount Snow. So I went over and I asked, hey, is there any place? Well, we, we had Tim, the kid, Hepper, and I think Hepper was probably pregnant. So we were there. And is there a place I can rent? Oh, yeah, there's a guy named Steve Green who has a little cabin up on the... I said, okay, so I went huh. to see Steve. Yeah, he said, yeah, sure, you can rent the... They called it the Bogle place. He says it's... Uh, the rent's a dollar a day. <laughs> <laughs> he said, oh, that's good. And I, I already had a job digging holes at, at uh, Mount Snow for a lift. So uh, we rented that place from Steve Green. We got talking, got to socializing. And so Jan was a big sports fan. She followed baseball especially. That's Steven's wife. And she, so she, and she, uh, we started talking sports. So I wrote a little thing about a famous cross country skier who was trying to yank everybody's chain by going out with one ski pole really long and one short pole, and they started training like that, and people saw them, and they got a little nervous. Maybe this is a new technique. <laughs> well, Jan liked my little right and I wrote just a page. She, so we often, we started going there for parties, and she said, are there any books on cross country? I said, not that I know of. And she said, would you like to write one? She said, I'll edit it for you. I said, sure. So that's, that's what, what happened. So I wrote the thing and she edited. She, uh -huh. was, a, she was a great editor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I've heard that that was a hometown publisher. Oh yeah. And they owned the bookseller for that's a right. while. Yeah. Yes, a lot of Stephen Green books that were either Vermont oriented or sports that's outdoors. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, great people. Yeah. What did you do for family vacations? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't take vacations. We couldn't afford room and board at a place. But, uh, and, you know, k people say, well, how come there's such good cross-country skiers? I said, I'd say, Ma and I are going skiing cross-country. Do you kids want to come along? We didn't have a television set. So, and, and if they wanted to ski, that was it, cross-country. Mm -hmm. We'd take, and there were a couple trips that the school promoted. Yeah. And when the kids got old enough, we'd take them there. We'd go to Stowe for two or three days yeah. or Bromley or something. And they've all, all four of those kids have ended up being cross-country skiers. They're very good couple skiers. couple in the Olympics. Yeah, yeah. One, um, one, one died, the youngest, the, uh, the daughter. She had an incurable cancer, but she, she skied in college, and she was good. She didn't go to the Olympics, but she might have been on the U.S., B team once, I don't know, hmm. I can't remember. So one of your granddaughters, Sophie, Sophie. was in the 2014 and the 2018 Olympics. Yeah. Um, and then you have a grandson, Patrick. Patty. Who, who was in the 2018 yeah, Olympics. that's right. As far as the Olympics go, you have been in competition, you've been an official, you've been a coach, you've been a spectator. That's it. And a grandfather, a father and a grandfather as well. Yeah. 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 
You know, someone said that um, in speaking about your family, because three generations, yeah. right, of cross-country skiers, they are indeed a once-in-future force of nature. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. You know, they're... Tim, the oldest, he's up in Greensboro right now and with his wife, Margaret, and they got a week at a lodge, and they're just cross-country skiing. They, are, they still do it all the time. Oh. Yeah. And well, Tim was four well, times in the four Olympics? Four-time Olympic. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good skier. And Sophie is his daughter. No, that's for his daughter, oh. Sophie. Uh -huh. It's hard to, get, <laughs> hard to keep track of. Yeah, yeah you've, got a, you've got a lot of kids there and yeah. a lot of grandkids. Well, four, yeah, four kids and ten grandkids. You have seen cross-country change a lot over decades mm -hmm. now, right? Yeah. What do you think? What's your take on things? If, if, even if you look at photographs, you see how much it's changed you know, in, in so many ways. Well, I suppose... When some of the changes occurred, I probably thought, well, that's it. Now we won't see much more in that direction. But the equipment gets better. The wax gets faster, even right. with all the restrictions now. The wax gets faster. The skis get faster. The ski bottoms get faster. The poles get lighter. The training mm. gets better. Mm -hmm. Even the clothing is better. Mm -hmm. Everything seems to be improving, and, and when I think, well, it's leveled off now, next year something else happens. So it's totally different than it was in the 30s and the 40s yes. when I started skiing. And yet it's still a very straightforward, simple kind of sport. Oh, sure. You can just strap on skis oh, yeah. pretty much and no, go. That's, that's the good thing about it, yeah. yeah. At the same time, I've it, heard that like in the Olympics there are um, professional waxers, right? Oh. that go along with the teams and all that oh. kind of thing. Norway has 10 or 15 waxers okay. just at the Olympics. Wow. Wow. And, you know, it's a serious sport. That's uh -huh. their national sport. Mm -hmm. Do you notice that skiing, it, when you watch, when you're spectating as, as uh, watching cross country, has the sport improved? Have skiers improved? Well, sure. Yeah? Yeah, they're faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the track setting is better, too. Mm. The tracks are better, or the grooming is better, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so that makes people look faster. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, John, thank you so much. It's been wonderful talking to you. Well, I always like to talk about cross-country, yes. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, that's, again, that's the, one of the wonderful things about reading the book was just the, um, the energy behind it and the goodwill, yeah. you know, and how much, um, how many wonderful stories there were just about being out there and being yeah. together yeah. with people. Yeah, I've been very lucky. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like you've had a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. That's great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks to all of you for joining us today. We thank John Caldwell for coming on the show and telling us about the olden days <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> from, the, yeah. from the last century, right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Oh, boy. Um, yep. Stay tuned. Uh, we are here. We are a weekly show, and we will continue to have folks from the community come on and talk about who they are, what they do, so that we can all stay connected and be in contact with each other. Thank you. Thank you.